downtown Daniel Evans back with some more messages to the world. Before I start with the messages, let me reiterate and refresh memories and present to the people who don't even know it exists FDR's second Bill of Rights or as he calls it, Economic Bill of Rights speech from 1944, his last State of the Union address before he passed in 1944. And he stated, in these economic, in our day, these economic truths have become accepted as self-evident. We have accepted, so to speak, a second Bill of Rights under which a new basis of security and prosperity can be established for all regardless of station, race, or creed. Among these are the right to a useful and, and a remunerative job in the industries or shops or farms or mines of the nation. The right to earn enough to provide adequate food, clothing, and recreation. The right of every farmer to raise and sell his products at a return which will give him and or her and their family a decent living. The right of every businessman, large or small, to trade in an atmosphere of freedom from unfair competition and domination by monopolies at home or abroad. The right of every family to a decent home, the right to, an adi to adequate medical care, and the opportunity to achieve and enjoy good health. The right to adequate protection from the economic fears of old age, sickness, accident, and unemployment. And of course, the right to a good education. All these rights spell security, not only for the nation, but for the individual people. All, after this war is won, remember it was the final year of going into the last year of World War II, when he wrote it, we must be prepared to move forward. And the implementation of these ideas and rights to new goals of human happiness and well-being. Now he said a mouthful that we haven't really addressed much of with efficacy. <laughs> And all of these, how many years has it been now? Pushing 80? Since, yeah, 44 to 20, yeah. Oh, almost 80 years now. But here's where we're at today. I propose, the brothers and sisters of humanity propose, and definitely the people for honesty in America propose, the reawakening of the long, too long, sleeping giant, as I have labeled it. Pioneer Valley Access TV, Speak Up America, promotes cures instead of Band-Aids. A 20% standard business corporate tax, which, thank God, Biden has finally taken care of. Of course, we have always mentioned the $15 an hour minimum wage for 30020 annual. Two and a half pennies on the dollar of gross sales contributed by every business with employees to the American Workers Dividend, a.k.a. AWD, for all rank and file hourly employees and salaried employees uh, 
at 3000 a week or better are not eligible to be paid this quarterly dividend. This is for the people underneath who need to be brought up. Now, once it's implemented, we do suggest for the first two years, the businesses get a 3% tax break for giving the people more money. Okay. Uh, we also want to tax business investments at 20, the same 20%. Most people don't realize it, but the expansion of McDonald's, Wendy's, other chains such as them only happen because they can invest in themselves all they want and never pay taxes on it to get richer. But they never invest in anything that makes the common worker richer. That's why we still have low salaries and the only ones getting dividends is Wall Street <laughs> business people. <laughs> so uh, this is our cure instead of band-aid for our economic problems. Those of us old enough to remember the reruns or the originals of situations like Laverne and Shirley, which I grew up in in the early 70s, two of us to get an apartment at minimum wage, and I tell you, minimum wage at that time was like 250 an hour. <laughs> you know, we were barely making 100 bucks a week for four. But after taxes, we could pay our rent, we could afford our car and the insurance and gas and all, we could feed ourselves, and we could still save 10, 15 bucks a week. Or, of course, if you're a partier, you had money for a life. But either way, we were much better off then. We were much better off then than we are now at seven fifty to ten dollars an hour, which seems to be the minimum standard nationwide. Okay. We also, as Biden mentioned yesterday, in giving amnesty to all of the people whose lives were ruined under the zero tolerance. We also advocate total legalization of cannabis nationwide with 20% of that going to federal tax. When we add that with all tax payer paid employees, military exception, must carry a bond, uh, 10 million if you're a supervisor department head, 20 million if you're a court officer or official, they can pay their own lawsuits. A lot of people may not realize it, but when Reagan started this business of we've got to protect our officials and they can't be worried about being sued. Well, if they're not paying for it, guess what? When you sue the police department, the officer pays nothing. When you sue an official or any taxpayer paid employee, they don't pay a penny. The taxpayers pay the person for them. I will guarantee you, the nation will save a trillion dollars there a year or damn close to it. Now, when you put all this together with what we put in Section 1 of New Deal 2020, which also states, as our Senator Warren here from Massachusetts has been fighting for for quite a few years, I think at least since Obama began his campaign, that millionaires should pay a millionaire's tax of something like 3%. Think of what all that money would do for our schools, our police department, et cetera, et cetera. But billionaires pay 5%. <laughs> so this is the way we plan on raising trillions of dollars for the taxpayers' needs. Crunch the numbers. Do the math. 
okay? We the people mandate, as I've said before, preservation of individual pursuits of happiness must be the law of the land. Now, that's pursuits of happiness that do not infringe upon or endanger others. We also have skin in the game, piece of the pie where no one gets raked over the coals. To enable the breeding of a socio-ethnic economic society that all 190 plus different peoples can share harmoniously. And as I'll state again, every seat there is in the UN, we're the only country that has a person from that seat in this country. No one else has all 190 as citizens. And last of not least, let me say, those who fear truth have crafted their own house of glass. It now surrounds them. We can see this going on with the January 6th hearing and etc. Now, let me take a break and add in some new things that we're adding in. I am leaving here this coming Thursday. This will air on Columbus Day Monday. So I'm leaving on Thursday and I'm seeking the counsel of the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the secretary of state where I lived for five years, so I have many contacts in Michigan. I'm going to ask them to write up an addition to the RICO Act on racketeering and conspiracy to include domestic terrorism under the same statutes, which means anyone who collaborated with the people on June 6th I don't care whether it's a president, politician, unfortunately, even a Supreme Court justice's wife can be brought in and must face charges because they're part of racketeering once we, the people, ratify this and make it constitutional. Now, I have mentioned before, so determination of character. It's a form that says this. You get to define yourself, every last tax payer paid employee in the country. I endeavor to seek and speak the truth. Yes sir, these are all yes or no. I endeavor to accept all that can be confirmed. Number three, I endeavor to accept verified findings and conclusions of those who possess expert knowledge I do not possess. I accept the fact that all human beings have equal value. Number five, I endeavor to promote and accept the fact that equal cannot be and is not equal without reception of the same. Number six, I endeavor to promote that no thing is more important than the truth, no matter how inconvenient. Number seven, I will adhere to the Annapolis West Point Code of Honesty, Honor, and Justice. And number eight was list, is listed as, is it better for yourself? More is better for yourself, more important than better for state and county. Okay. Now, I'm adding a number nine and a number ten. Can government address repairing America by spending less and doing less? This is for the people who want less government in our life. And I'm sorry, when, uh, what was his name, uh, Goldwater, back in 1964, or whatever it was, started this 
republicanism that we want the government in our lives less. Well, then there were barely 200 million people. Now there's 300 what million people? Once again, number nine, can government address repairing America by doing less? Okay, and number 10 that we're adding on, nine and 10, is the baby Jesus described as olive skin and woolen hair. Now I added those two on because they're two of the mainstays of our problem. The Ku Klux Klan, the Oath Keepers, the Proud Boys, they march singing onward Christian soldiers. They don't complain about any of the immigrants that come in through Canada and New York and etc. But any of them from South America who have olive skin, and a great deal of them have hair, are of woolen hair. So what are they saying? They would hang Jesus if he showed up in front of them? These questions are necessary. Then we will know their character. Now, number two, that goes with part two that goes with it, is remembering the FBI hearings. When I believe he's from California, a senator named Trey Gowdy boomed at the FBI director at the time, I think it was Comey, you haven't taken your polygraph tests for two years. Why should I believe a word you say? Well, guess what, Mr. Gowdy? If you're going to test, excuse me, if you're going to polygraph test the people who have kept us safe for all these years, the people also have the right to polygraph you and have all of you take the definition of character. Let me end today with the Messages to the World, Easter edition of 2021. And then I have just a few more things to say about what's happening this weekend today to end. Ready? Humanity is at a financial pinnacle that we as Americans control 20% plus of the Earth's total commerce. Uh, last estimate I got off of uh, Google a, a while back was 80 trillion dollars flows on earth and we control pretty much 20 plus a trillion of it here in America. 10 to 15 percent of America's population controls approximately 85% of that wealth. Of the people, for the people, and by the people must not be potential. It must become kinetic in our economics for the common working person, not just that 15%. The People for Honesty in America and the Brothers and Sisters of Humanity in tandem with our many associates, endeavor to do the best we can, as much as we can, as long as we can, to prevent the 15% from hoarding 85%. We promote equitable equality that breeds, crafts, fashions, and enables citizens' individual pursuits of happiness. We have outlined the blueprint for all of our 190 plus socio-ethnic societies to have a guaranteed piece of the pie. As I say, equal becomes equal when all receive the same. No one gets raked over the coals for the benefit of the few or the one. I'll restate, white privilege, male privilege, any kind of privilege must be redefined as human privilege. 
If we, the fourth wheel of government, do not vote for what we want and desire for ourselves, what we want and desire will not come to fruition. Yeah, poor is, it, poor is poor, and working to stay poor is paycheck poverty. Being homeless for lack of funds or access is still homelessness. Looking at an end that can't be seen, instead of justifying our reasons for differences, we must work to eliminate what has caused these differences. Truth as a given eliminates all need of deception. We the people must not differentiate. What was not good for the goose will never be good for the gander. Now, to just end up on what's going on, as I mentioned, we're at a pinnacle in society where we have hearings that Officials who are involved don't want to talk because they don't want the truth to come out. As I mentioned along the way, we have a Supreme Court Justice's wife who, it appears before it's outright proven, was in one way or another stoking the flames or at least enabling and putting in her two cents on January 6th. Uh, sedition and insurrection. This must cease to exist. That's why I'll state an ending. The bottom line of it is everyone that gets paid by our taxpayer dollars must constitutionally be tied to like a civil, like part of the civil service to take the self-definition of character to fill it out. They must, once a year, and we can't wait more than a year because look what people can do with mischief if you wait two years. Uh, cut sedition, insurrection, uh, the, conspir the conspiring with domestic terrorism off at the knees. I can't state it any plainer. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful week. I'll be back next week with continuing messages.